Houston's Comedy of Errors. Try not to kill my dogs. Emma premieres Friday at 9 on Sky Movies Screen 1. Now on Dot TV, Kate Russell and her team of computer experts solve more of your computer problems in Chips with Everything. Hello and welcome to Chips with Everything. And now, if you thought you were alone in the wilderness that is computer problems, then you're most definitely wrong. Guiding us on our long journey to find the lost solutions are three professionals, or at least that's what they call themselves. Anyway, we have Simon Smart from Hyperdeck. Are you a professional? Um, on the off day. On the off day, <laughs> and not on the on days, though. Next thing we have Aaron from SP New Media. Welcome okay. to you, Aaron. One of the professionals I hope you'll be today. I hope so. And finally, completing our trio, more like, more like Charlie's Angels and the professionals with three of you, aren't there? We have, of course, Kevin from Symantec. Thank so you. thank you for joining us again as well. Well, let's begin with an email from David, who writes from Lincoln. He says, I have installed a new zip drive onto my PC and as drive E, but would like to change it to drive A instead. Can I do this, and if so, how? Aaron, first of all, why, why would you want to change drives around, change the, the numbers and letters of drives? Is there any real sort of benefit in doing it? Well, that, that would be my first question to David, is mm. what, what exactly is the reason that he wants to do this? Um, the most likely is for security. It's, it's obviously much better to have your, your bootable drive as a, a zip drive or a, a jazz drive or whatever than a, than a floppy because it, it's, it's inherently much more secure. Mm. So if, if that's the reason, then, then that's great. I, I suspect it is security. Okay. Um, do you think, though, Kevin, is it going to be something that's easy to do or is it going to be something that we're going to have to sort of messing around with the, the, the system set up and therefore causing ourselves problems? I don't know how easy it's going to be. It really depends on the age of the system and the BIOS in the system. Some BIOSes can support that very easily, where you just go into the setup and say, this is a, um, an LS120 drive or whatever you would have in that system. If it's supported at the BIOS level, it's easy. If not, you may need to add a special card that then interacts with BIOS and with a cable going to this extra device. Right, so not terribly difficult to actually do. Um, Simon, anything to add from yourself? Any particular hints or tips that might be useful? I mean, we're talking about memory storage here, really, in a way, aren't we? <laughs> I think it would be useful to have a look at the installation routine for the zip drive because there's going to be a portion in there where it declares a drive letter. And oh, so you might actually be able to instruct it from installation st yeah. uh, in well, the same way as you could a software within the program. Insta installation script, perhaps. Right, it's and that would about. probably be the easiest way to do it and would set up all of the systems. Aaron, I mean, can we actually, in trying to mess around with you know, things like this on the automatic setup, is there any real danger of completely messing up the computer or, or you know, doing things like backups going to protect us from any inherent problems from the future? Um, there's always a danger of, of messing things up, um, mm. but uh, in in this case, I, 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 if when he's installing the zip drive and he specifies that he wants it to be A, if that is an option on the installation process, if there is going to be a conflict, the install program would let him know at that at that point anyway. If it's conflicting with an existing drive, which obviously mm. it will, mm. uh, I'm not familiar with the installation of the zip, so I don't know how it would manage that conflict. But just okay. just be careful. Well, there you go. There's the answer. You can do it, but be careful. That's what Aaron says because he cares about you. And I'm not, don't blame him at all. We all care about you. <laughs> so, moving swiftly onwards, it's time now for Peter Nanborough, who has emailed us with this teaser for our panel. Hello, Kate and panel. I recently upgraded to Windows 95 and was assured that it was easy to install. When I started, restarted the computer after the installation, a warning appeared that my graphics adapter was not properly configured. I had a correct picture and everything seemed to be working as it should. Do you think something is wrong? Simon, Windows 95. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> it's telling us that we've got a problem when there doesn't appear to be a problem. That's unusual, isn't it? Mm, just for a change. <laughs> I think um, this is an opportunity for a, dare I say it, reinstall. I'm not a great no, fan. No, 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 <laughs> don't say that. I'm not a great fan of um, the upgrade route mm. because I don't think it um, recognises hardware properly. But that's just my view, of course. Mm. Um, so I would, I would favour a, a fresh installation. 
you would favour a complete mm. and utter reinstallation. Mm. You just like sitting down in front of the computer with a cup of tea and about three hours where no one's allowed to interrupt you. And a digestive you, don't you? biscuit, which you're yeah. accidentally sticking the floppy disk. Right? <laughs> yeah. No wonder you have so many computer problems. Yeah. I'm going to move swiftly on now to Aaron as well. Then, Aaron, any advice from yourself? I take a slightly less drastic approach initially. <laughs> I would I would look in control panels and and try going to the add new hardware section, see if you can configure the, the drive through that process. Alternatively, um, have a look in the device manager, which mm -hmm. is in the system section of the control panels, and, and see if there's a conflict. If there is, the conflict wizard may be able to help you through it. Um, that might be a sort of a quick five minute that is thing one to try nice, first hand. That is one nice feature, isn't it? That, um, uh, you know, that find add install hardware on, on control panels, isn't it? Because it will find it for you if it's there. Um, Kevin. Yourself, are you going to be a reinstall man, or are you uh, are you in favour of the uh, less arduous routes? M much, much less. I I don't buy the uh, let's reinstall. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I think it could I'm be quite. <laughs> There's dissension in the ranks, though. You see, we're all ganging, ganging up on you. You've said reinstall just once too often. <laughs> uh, I, I believe it may be simpler than that. I think that uh, we would want to look in the config.sys or the autoexec.bat to see if there are some old DOS drivers loaded there. And if so, let's remove those. And to get to those, you would either call it up through Notepad or, or use Edit to look for old DOS drivers. They may be something like VESA drivers. Pull those mm -hmm. out of there. Windows can handle it. Excellent. OK, well, a variety of different solutions there for you as well. But as a re last resort, you can reinstall. Well, that's what Simon Smart says anyway, and you can send all your emails to him complaining about that particular suggestion. An email has been sent in, and this one is from Rodney Walmsley, who is in Preston. And Rodney said, Dear Kate, could you please inform me on how to change the recycle bin icon back to the original Windows 95 icon, as for some reason it has started appearing as a folder type icon. Thanking you and the team for any helpful information. How nice. And I thank you first. We've got to help this, so we've got to help Rodney, Aaron. Um, has anything like this ever happened to you? Actually, it has. It happened to a friend of mine. Um, <laughs> oh, that's what so they all say. A friend of mine yeah. installs one of these applications that turns your wastebasket into a toilet. So when you empty the wastebasket, it flushes it. It's very cute and cuddly. But when he tried to, to deinstall the application, it left his recycled bin as a folder. Um, I don't know whether this is what's happened to Rodney. It, probably not. But um, all I can say was in that instance, it cleared itself within two or three reboots of Windows. Mm. I don't know exactly why and how it did that, but but I wouldn't know how to actually change the, his problem the folder back again manually. No. Oh, Kevin, how about yourself? Any? I mean, are we, dare I say, are we talking another reinstallation? Maybe. No reinstall here. I think. Hey. I, I may I may leave that. Um, <laughs> this I've actually seen shareware that Microsoft offer that you can change some of your system settings, including icons and things like that. I've also seen shareware packages that will let you remove the uh, recycle completely from your, your desktop. Mm -hmm. um, if you really wanted to get into it, you could also go into the registry and search for namespace and then delete the namespace key and the uh, recycle bin will go away. Right, now you can do the same to remove, because there are some things like the networking icon that I have on my desktop. I mean, I'm never going to use that. I can actually remove it in that way as well, That can is I? correct. Ah, very. In fact, I'm going to do that as soon as I get home, Simon, because I've been meaning to ask somebody but not getting around mm -hmm. to it. Um, how about you? Is that how you'd go about doing it? Um, it was a bit of a confusing one for me, actually. I, I was wondering that perhaps if some of the sort of things to what you described has taken place, is it? Does it possibly change the um, attributes on the, the recycle folder in any way? No, it does no? not. So they are actually fixed. They're fixed as well, so you're not going to ruin the waste paper. Mm. But a good point indeed, Simon. I think you and I are going to go home and play with our computer desktops now. Oh, yeah. Thanks to the advice of Aaron and Kevin. Mm. Well, we all learned something new on this show, even us. Now, our final question has come from all the way from Matthias Larsson in Sweden. And I hope I said your name properly, Matthias. He says, I have a three gig hard drive, but apparently Windows 95 doesn't like drives of this size. I've tried two separate partitions, but I'm aware that Windows doesn't like multiple vision parti visible partitions either. Or does it? Please help me. Um, Simon, it never ceases to amaze me that we allow our computers to get away with saying, oh, no, I can't, uh, no, my computer won't like that software program, no, no, no. Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, they're there as tools for us, aren't they? I thought we worked for them, actually. 
We, we yes. work for them, indeed we do. Well, that's what you might think, reading, uh, particularly reading some of the emails we get here on Chips with Everything. But what could, what, why could there be a limit? Well, I didn't think that um, Windows 95 couldn't cope with visible partitions, because I've, I've partitioned drives to uh, within the, the Windows 95 partition size limit, and mm. it's been OK. So I think See? there's more to this than meets the eye. Um, if he's having tr trouble using the... Um, the F disk that comes with Windows 95, you could try using a third party one like. Um, what what does F disk do? F disk is the um, utility that creates the partition information right. and activates the partition for booting. So maybe try a different one. Yeah, it's sort of like easy. Kevin, um, I mean, have you ever heard of anything like this before? Yes, absolutely. Um, original versions of Windows 95 would only allow a 2 gig partition. Now, if the, this computer came with a newer version of Windows 95 called OSR2 or FAT32, there is a limit of the size of the drive that you can have. Um, somewhere off the top of my head, it's something like 16 gig or something to that effect. Mm. So that's well within this 3 gig issue that we have here. Um, How do you know which one you've got? Well, you can actually check the timestamps on the date. So what is it, 950B, I think it is, right. um, on the, the, the timestamps. Is, is that what it I is? I think so, yeah. Yeah. And, and that will tell you that you're running this OSR2 or FAT32. Now, which one do we need to be running in order to, to, to sort out the uh, This problem? needs to be uh, 950B right. on the, on the timestamp of any window file, right. um, a DLL, for example. With that, you don't have a problem. OK, Aaron, very quickly, I've got to come to you now. Um, any other last pearls of wisdom? Yeah, you could try something like Partition Magic, which will convert the, the FAT16 to FAT32. That might, might help to alleviate the problem. And that's a software program available from? Um, Can you get um, it from the internet, perhaps? No. You, you absolutely have to, to buy that retail somewhere. Right, but reasonably priced from most good retail yeah, It's about outlets. 60 pounds. About 60 pounds, and it's called Partition Magic. Well, there you go. Lots and lots and lots of different advice for you there. I hope you managed to follow it all, Matthias. I'm sure I didn't, but uh, if you had any problem, then just write to us again. Now, we've reached the end of this instalment of Chips, but if you can be sure that we'll be back soon with more of your problems solved by our experts. So, contact us. Email cwe at tvchannel.com. .co.uk. Thank you to our guests, Kevin. Thank you. You were great. And also to Aaron and, of course, the ever faithful Simon Smart from Hypertech. And thank you for continuing to watch us. Do join us next time. Tonight on Sky One, there's something wrong. The malfunction of a deadly new weapon. What the hell is it going for? With catastrophic oh. results. We've been hit! We're in big trouble up here! A new Space Island One. Humans are.